Revolution Now. Today we are doing the 20 best albums of 2020. I've been waiting a long time for this day. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm gonna go ahead and try something different, recording outside, and I'm very excited to uh, get this going. Hey, can I ask you guys some questions real quick? Yeah. Have you guys listened to any good music this year? By the way, do I have permission to film you? Yeah. Is that okay? Good. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is probably Eternal It Take by Louise Burt. Hell yes! That's a great choice. Anyone else? I don't know. Anyone? Anyone? Er, what? Yeah. Anyone listen to Blade? No? Alright, check out Blade when you have a chance. It's a good time. Thanks for being in the video. Now let's get my list started. I've been thinking a long time about it. I have a good list, so we'll see how it goes. Unfortunately, I'm going to be honest with you. Those kids have really fucking bad taste in music. Punk Revolution now. There they are. Can you zoom in? There they are. So these are the kids I asked about the top albums and they don't know I'm filming them right now but I just want to say uh oh Punk Revolution now we are now sufficiently isolated there's quarantine I have my mask off in public but we're far away from everyone so it should be okay first thing you want to do before starting a long video such as the albums of 2020 the best videos uh, albums got energy up so let's go ahead and and get that going. Now we can put that down. And this is just a show off. Can we do another shot? Whoa! That was just to get you excited. Let's go ahead and get the best albums of the year started. And honestly, you know what you need now. After using energy, Gotta refill. 2020. Going down in history is one of the worst years, but my YouTube channel had a good time. I've listened to pretty much every single album that's come out this year multiple times so I can review it. And I'm ready to assemble the most. <sighs> Holy shit, I'm out of weight. Let's get started and remember. I've listened to these albums a lot more than anyone else. If you disagree, remember who's listening to more albums. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first album on my list of the top 20 is number 20, coming in with bra uh, Brain Bombs. Cold Case. Brain Bombs are so amazing. They're like one of the most influential noise rock bands ever they have such a freaking sick thing going on where they just play these freaking riffs over and over again so noisy so crazy they got some like improvised trumpet or something in there and you know it's it's not for everyone the lyrics are very edgy it's a simple formula if you want complex music you're not going to get it here if you want some disgusting riffs repeated over and over and over again And you love rock and roll. And you love what makes rock and roll good, which is being a little bit dirty. Then maybe you should check out Brain Bombs. Brain Bombs are freaking classic, very inappropriate, very edgy. Not recommended for kids, but it's number 20 because it's a good time. So check it out. Let's move on to number 19. Number 19, Poppy's album, I Disagree. This album is pretty fucking crazy. It has its flaws. It's not a perfect album by any means. It's inconsistent, it's weird, it's confusing, it's strange. But frankly, I fucking love this album because it's like, it's like, 
It's like, what is going on? Oh shit, I just coughed outside during COVID. The blend of metal with like progressive metal and metalcore and pop and like just all this weird psychedelic shit. Like, it's like a pop album I've never heard before. It's really ambitious, it's creative, it's fun. I had fun listening to it and honestly, it stuck with me. It deserves a spot in the top 20. Poppy, go check her out, she's a legend. Let's move on to the next album. Again, for fun. 18 is AG Cook's new album, 7G. AG Cook, a very important producer in the past decade with all sorts of really fucked up pop music, PC music, bubblegum bass, whatever you want to call it. He's been a big influence on pop music in the past decade. Really creative guy. I'm not crazy about PC music. I'm not crazy about most of the albums he's worked on, but this one is a three hour long album where he's just, just exploring all these crazy, weird, different electronic ideas. And it's just, it's just so satisfying to see this artist kind of just do whatever the fuck he wants for three hours experimenting. And honestly, I feel like these experiments, they pay off, they're creative, they're interesting. I enjoy this album, good stuff. Shout out to AG Cook, talented musician. Let's move on to the next one. Let's just do a little bit of these. I had a red monster. Oh my, this whole thing is shaking. Now, we move on to the next album, which is going to be... Oh, I can decapitate if I'm not careful. Puron's album, Abscess Time, is number 17. This is such a sick metal album. Puron is like one of the best metal bands of all time. And we're so lucky to get to exist while they're releasing music. They're releasing, how do you put this? Crazy, noise rock, black metal, death metal, progressive insanity? I don't know. But if you like crazy noise rock, if you like crazy metal, you want to hear a band get really down and dirty. It's like, honestly, it's like Swans made a death metal band. And it's really nerdy and cool. It's like, I love this album. So, go check out Pure on their fucking legends. I saw them, I saw them live. All right, let's move. Sorry, there's a lot of people around. This is not a good place to be. Let's walk this way. Number 16 is Run the Jewels. Fourth album, Run the Jewels 4. Run the Jewels, come on! If you follow hip hop, you know who Run the Jewels is already. I don't need to, sh I don't need to say anything about this album. But I guess I should. So number four, so 16, Run the Jewels. Amazing hip hop duel, duel by Killer Mike and LP. This album, I feel like they're really, they really, they, 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 they stepped it up a notch with some really powerful lyricism that just felt so important when it came out. Like, this album came out just around the times of the, you know, the, the, the George Floyd, the defund the police protests. Very powerful protests. And then on top of all that, this very powerful album comes out. It, 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 it hits you in, in your heart. And it feels good. And it's also just amazing hip-hop. So go check this fucking album out. Run the Jewels are legends. Go check them out. Go check them out. So, number 15 is going to be Uniform's album, Shame. Uniform are a really freaking sick noise rock band that are, I mean, they're just doing so much weird shit. It's like industrial, almost like a tad bit metal, this album, honestly. This album, like, it's just so compressed and so dark and noisy. It's like, you don't really know what's going on, but like, you can just tell Uniform are like, not concerned about pleasing your ears. They want to make something avant-garde. They want to do something different with their album. They want to just push the limits of noise rock. And frankly, the end result kicks ass. This album fucking rocks. Go check out Uniform. This is my favorite Uniform album, by the way. That's why it's one of the best of the year. It's fucking sick. Go check it out. Let's move on to the next album. <sighs> so.
So basically what happened, I jumped up and my thighs like squeezed together when I landed and pretty much there's like a, a, a spot like right here that hurts really bad. I can't explain it but like somehow like my thighs went together like that and they clapped and it kind of the pain kind of goes like like this way and the way when I landed my leg my leg kind of like landed like really straight I guess you could say like maybe I should have bent my knees but it kind of like shot up and then when my thighs went like that it's kind of like it had a lot of pressure going from both ways <coughs> oops I can't cough in public with COVID what are we on we're only on 15 by the way I don't know what Anthony Fantano is going to do yet with his list but I do think frankly like I've been following him closely. Every year he gets worse. My recommendation, don't even watch it. Just dislike it and click away immediately. Or do me a favor, don't even dislike. Well, if you, if you, if you do have to click on it, you gotta dislike it. For those of you who have made it this far in this video, I just wanna say, please give me your comments, message me, email me, Punk Revolution Now. Everyone send me as many ideas as you possibly can. Basically, like, we need to spread the word that Anthony Fantano, despite the fact that he's like chasing after subscribers, he's trying to hurt people. We need to make sure people stop subscribing to him, unsubscribe to him, and watch my videos instead, frankly. But if they don't have to watch my videos, but the main the main idea is we need to get people to stop watching Anthony Fantano. And please send me your ideas of how to get people to do that. I'm serious. But it's kind of amazing that all of this music came out during COVID-19. That's just a little FYI. So, oh, this monster is not sticking in my soul correct. I think we're allowed over here. Okay, watch out for sticks. Now we're gonna be reviewing Them Air's newest album, Union Suit XL. A little FYI, Anthony Fantano literally just reviewed Them Air's months after I did. And he's getting all the credit for exposing them when I was the one who found them first, way back earlier in the year from their earlier album. Anthony Fantano's again doing the whole thing where he you know, watches my video. I almost played a show with this band, so you know I'm a real deal. Anthony Fantano has never played a fucking show in his life. Union Suit, XL, really sick, artsy fartsy, punk, post-punk, noise rock, lots of Thinking Fellers Union vibes, lots of just weird, quirky 90s indie post-punk vibes. Like this is a band that's just weird as fuck, but they're really creative. They really know how to fucking write an album. I have a blast with it. I highly recommend it. This is one of the smaller artists on this list. If you want to su support a smaller independent artist, go check them out because they really kick ass. They're one of the best rock bands around right now. You need to go listen to them. They're freaking punk. They're punk. They're sick. Please check them out. Support your smaller artists. Don't listen to Anthony Fantano. Say you found them because of my review. Thank you for watching. Let's go to the next one. Folks, we're now at number 13 and we are frankly at Deftones Ohms, which is freaking it. They've been around for decades and they've been releasing so many good alternative metal albums non-stop kicking ass a little shoegaze maybe in there a little dream pop like combining these kind of gentle beautiful rock and roll elements with freaking alternative metal that rips ass it's so good the way it blends together is these genres and works so flawlessly it's a formula that no one else can possibly pull off besides Deftones and Deftones did it again this year with Alms. I love the fucking riffs here are just so heavy. It's like, how do you do that? How do you have like these heavy ass riffs that are like new metal, kind of like almost like the, the way they get so chuggy with the chords are almost like gent, but then somehow it combines with like beautiful dream pop vocals that are really emotional. And frankly, the end result is a just a kick ass rock album. So many, there's like, no one's releasing really that very good rock albums ever anymore. And then freaking Deftones, who's been around for decades, has to come out and do it again. You'd expect a band that's been doing this for so long to just not be able to release any more good albums. But somehow they're still releasing good albums. And it's one of the best albums of the year. It's a freaking rock album. There's so few. It's like... So that's... <sighs> Follow me. This is the 12th best album of 2020. Floral Tattoos, you can never have a long enough head start. Floral Tattoo is a, just like a, this is such like a DIY, do-it-yourself punk band, humble band, not, not no, no crazy, fancy, pantsy production, big record label, no. This is an indie band, bring you powerful, innovative, emo, shoegaze, music that is just like just so full of creativity so full of ambition this is a, a lo-fi band i don't really want to say blow-fi but it's you know what i'm trying to say it's an underground indie rock band 
that's bringing some of the most ambitious, some of the most powerful rock music of the fucking year. It kicks ass. I was fortunate enough to interview Floral Tattoo. They rock ass. They're cool people also, which is also very important. We shall move on to the next one, but go check out Floral Tattoo. I guess I shouldn't reveal his name. He's covering his eyes. But this is a Punk Revolution Now t-shirt. So what you basically... Basically what I'm trying to say is this is a really nice shirt. The way it's printed is pinched, it's 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 printed in a way that it's like kind of like seeped into the shirt. It's firmly in there, it's high quality. This is, you know, I, I like to make my crew wear it. Hopefully this is, you know, you're still watching this video because we are still, we're not even halfway done with this video. This is, a, this is gonna be an epic video. Buy a shirt in the description, Big Cartel. It's gonna be punkrevolutionnow.bigcartel.com. You gotta admit, look at this, go back, go back, go back. Look how good he looks, like just as a person. Like if you saw this person, you'd be like, yo, black, that's sick. I don't like a, uh... let's see. So it's a game called Skate. Basically, how it goes, I do a trick. If you do it, you're still good. If you do a trick and I can't do it, you win or vice versa. So I'll do the trick first. Uh, you, you do the trick first. Shove it. Yes, <laughs> Dumbass. By the way, you get a couple tries. <laughs> this is a little trick called the kickflip, which I actually already did earlier. So actually, you know what? So earlier today I did a kickflip. So your turn, buddy. Yeah, just yell at the kids. Or... Excuse me? What? Hi, we're shooting a video. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. It's okay. If you don't want to do it, it's okay. I just want to ask you real quick. What music has you have you listened to this year? I don't know. I don't listen to music. You don't listen I to don't music? Really, I don't really. I don't listen to music. Totally okay. When I was your age, you know, I was just getting started with music. <laughs> but you should, I swear, listen to punk rock. It's going to change your life. We need more people to listen to punk. All the kids nowadays, like, I've asked a million kids, none of them listen to music anymore. If we if we get the, if we get everyone to listen to punk music, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna feel the rage inside of them. Can I ask you something? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. How do you feel about Donald Trump? I don't like him. I don't like him either. So go find some punk music, listen to punk music, channel that anger that you have at Donald Trump, and put it in the punk music and make some punk music too. Because you guys are the future of music. Do you understand? Look at this word. You see what it says here? It says punk revolution now. We need a punk revolution now. Let's go. Is this like a YouTube video? Young kids, you know, probably around like eight or nine years old, haven't really listened to much music yet. If, they, if it wasn't for me, they would have gone on YouTube. They would have seen Anthony Fantano and they would have watched Anthony Fantano and they would have been listening to Anthony Fantano. And they, guess what they would have listened to? What would they freaking have listened to? 11 is Nouvel Oscura. I gotta re read it, it's a long title. Nouvel Oscuras, As We Suffer From Memory and Imagination. This is a fucking sick Screamo band, sick Screamo album. Nouvel Oscura is one of the very best Screamo bands around. Really powerful vocals. And this album, they're just pushing their creativity and ambition to the edges. They are just trying to make some fucking chaotic, crazy music. It's like almost like a complex jazz record. It's just so, it's like, it's like, if you like complex Screamo, you gotta check this out. Like all these songs are just like bursts of like harsh aggression and it's just i love screamo it's one of my favorite genres oh wait, 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 wait i don't need the mask on i guess i did when i was talking to the kids i don't have time to refilm it so but i'm telling everyone go check out nouvelle oscura another small band anthony fantano does not have the courage or intellect to review another if you want to su support another indie band you should check them out and by the way they really this is really one of the best albums of the year it's fucking sick if you like aggressive music if you like punk if you like screamo and if you don't like that you should still check it out because maybe it's gonna be the first album that you listen to that's screamo that you enjoy so, let's move on to the next album. Yeah. Oh. Say that again! He doesn't like punk rock! Who doesn't? He doesn't! Who doesn't? You don't like punk rock. I just came up here. Listen! You, you don't like punk rock. To the beauty. I haven't heard punk rock. Listen. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Stop bullying him. We're doing the video. <laughs> it's not funny. Stop laughing. I've listened to a lot of music, and I just know kids your age are just not... Like, what do you think of Donald Trump? What? 
Trump. What do you think of Donald Trump? He's an absolute supporter. Wait, Donald Trump? He loves Donald Trump. You like Donald Trump? No, wait, I didn't hear you. You like Donald Trump? No. Yeah. Well, say it to the camera because everyone's going to think you do. I don't like Donald Trump. All right, there we go. So I'm going to say is like... Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at number 10. Assuming I didn't skip any by accident and I'm counting correctly, which I... We'll see. So number 10 is going to be Autiker's album Plus. Which, by the way, Autiker is one of the best electronic acts of all time. They've been making killer music since the freaking 90s. Like, literally some of the best electronic music ever. I, I'm a huge Autiker fan. Like, on my Spotify raps, they were one of my most listened to album uh, musicians. And they... Ew. They released one called Sign and one called Plus. They released Plus first and then they released... No. They released Sign first and then they released Plus. Plus... Well, you know what? I just preferred Plus, and honestly, I think it's one of their best albums in like a decade. It's so sick, really intricate IDM, really cool percussive work, really creative. Honestly, like, it's Autiker, like, it's Autiker releasing some of their best songs in 2020! And it's, they released two albums, and both of them are great, but I think Plus is like, or excuse me, I think Sign, fuck it! I like Sign more, no, I like Plus more. Okay, let's go. Number nine is Sprain. Sprain is, again, like, oh my god, like, there's been a lot of good indie rock coming out here. Sprain is, like, really creative, post-hardcore, noise rock, gonna be taking influence from a lot of, like, the best of 90 post-hardcore. Like, I'm gonna hear influence from, like, Unwound in there, from, like, the, you know, amazing, like, slowcore influence, like, um, c c c codeine, but, like, there's so much more than that, like, the, the way they kind of bounce back and forth between, like, these noisy, c c c c crazy, repetitive riffs that, like, but then they like have all these crazy song structures the way they build up it's almost like post-rock and then they have these like droney kind of metal sections and it's just like is this post hardcore slow core droney post-rock and you know unwound is one of my favorite bands and i love post hardcore and 90s post hardcore is my favorite so the fact that there's a band doing this that's not died that is, that is experimenting with music this way frankly it warms my heart i love spraying go check them out again a small band doing their own thing. This is their debut album. Good for them for releasing such a kick-ass debut album. It's one of the best in the year. Amazing. I love this album. I listen to this album and it blows my mind every time. We're getting in the top. This is the top 10. They made it the top 10. I don't give any, any band the top 10. Okay? This is... Sprain kicks my fucking ass hard. And every time I listen to them, I have a lot of fun. So, keep filming. We're not done talking about Sprain. Sorry. I had a fart. Well, I didn't really, but I, I thought I did. So, Sprain is amazing. I guess we should move on. I think I said everything I needed to. Sun's definitely going down. Let's see. So basically what happens is when you have energy drinks, this is what happens to me. I kick ass at skateboarding for a long time, able to do my kickflip, do whatever you need to do, talk about music, get a little shaky. I get really shaky with caffeine. Here they come. I, I would not. God damn it, I want to talk to them so bad. I want to see if they've listened to number eight, which is R.A.P. Ferreira's Purple Moonlight Pages. Ah, Purple Moonlight Pages. This is a freaking Fantasimo album. R.A.P. Ferreira is already a pretty well-established, well-respected artist under the name Milo, but this is his debut under R.A.P. Ferreira. And like, what he's basically doing here is just just gorgeous. The, 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 the samples he chooses to use in his, his beats are like almost like freaking like jazz fusion, like really jazzy, beautiful. And you know, like lots of hip hop uses jazz samples, but the way he's utilizing it here is so like atmospheric and like, like his, his, his rapping just fits into it so nicely in a way that, like I said, like he has like a freaking Pharaoh Sanders cover at the end of the album. I think it says everything you need to know about this album. It kicks ass. He's got such creative lyrics. Like this is like really an outstanding hip hop album. One of the best of the whole freaking year. Certainly one of the best hip hop albums of the year. Go check it out. If you like hip hop, you gotta check it out because it fucking kicks ass. For number seven, we're gonna try doing both at once. So, number seven is Sewer Slut's Draining Love Story. Sewer Slut is a fantastic electronic musician. Actually, I want to get off the skateboard because she is so talented. She deserves my full attention. Sewer Slut is. How do I put this? She's making atmospheric drum and bass that is like, it's like simultaneously like beautiful and atmospheric and like emotional. Well, sometimes, well at the same time being like mildly abrasive in a way and like dark and kind of like depressing. It's 
it's it's it's it's really emotional while also just being like ear candy everything just sounds so good get yourself a nice pair of headphones while listening to this it's gonna it's gonna be like it's like such a such a dream it's such a wet dream come true let me just say this right now i a hundred percent want everyone watching this video to please wear a mask when you're outside please follow the rules with covid19 it's actually serious i'm wearing when we're not when we're not filming i always put the mask on immediately after i'm being very careful when there's people walking by i put a mask on you'll see in the video me having a mask on here and there i'm making my crew wear masks and we're we're standing six feet apart so please wear a mask and also get vaccinated when it comes out because vaccines are good for you and don't just because you see me outside not wearing a mask don't be like me i'm shooting a video this video i've been waiting for all year so it's okay for me not to wear a mask but i'm wearing a mask still when people come by and i'm good here i'll just put it on now i guess we're still gonna take it off once we need to talk more about music because it muffles and honestly like just to prove a point by the way listen to sewer sluts it's it's an amazing album she's an amazing artist cannot wait to see what she does next um, so let's just move on to the next one. Number six. We're going to take it off again because we're going to be talking about music. Number six is Moses Sumney's Grey. And let me tell you, Moses Sumney's Grey, when you look at the album cover, you zoom in real close, you see a nice big grey butt. I'm not even kidding. It's a butt in the album cover. First thing you're going to notice about it is it's going to be a big butt on the album cover. If you're trying to get someone to listen to your music, you want to put a big butt on your album cover. And there's a person coming. i got to put the freaking mask on again. Don't say anything. Don't show them. Someone was just staring at me. Why? Because I said butt? Because I said big gray butt and I can't even talk about freaking butts anymore? There's a lot of old people around here. I don't want to get them sick. Let them see it. Come on, show it to them. Come on, we're gonna... All right, okay. The thing is, when you're punk, you're not supposed to really like any of the establishment politicians. I just wanted to rub that in Trump's face and all the Trump supporters' face. So, okay. Now, Moses Sumney's gray. Moses Sumney's gray. And we gotta take the mask off because it smells like someone's doing a campfire. It smells smoky. And I like the way it smells, so let's keep the mask on so I can smell it easier. So Moses Sumney's gray. This is the first this is the first time I listened to Moses Sumney was this album. And frankly, folks, it's immediately apparent that he is just outstandingly, outstandingly talented. His voice is so beautiful, like literally the best voice I've heard this year. This is a long album, really long, really, really intricate, really beautiful, very angelic arrangements. Like this this album literally sounds like freaking heaven on earth. Like if you want to listen to an album that literally sounds like you're you've gone to heaven and there's a beautiful, beautiful vocalist singing, really emotional, powerful songs, gorgeous like chamber art pop that's like synthy and like Honestly, it's just it's just it's just beautiful. It's like an hour and a, how long is this album? Like an hour and a half? I don't know. An hour, or two hours? I haven't I haven't I haven't checked. I forgot to write my notes down before the video. I lost my notes. Moses somebody gray. We're getting so close to the top ten. So please buy our shirt. Buy our shirt. I would never show someone's body like that unless they gave me permission. Benji has one of the best bodies I've seen. He goes to the gym regularly, except with COVID-19, he has to do yoga. The monster, it's kicking hard. I'm... Hum's Inlet. Hum. So remember how I was talking about Deftones earlier and how Deftones, they're a band that's been around for decades and they have to be the ones to come back. They've already been doing this for so long. They have to come out back decades after, you know, they've been doing this for decades and now they have to release one of the best albums of the year. Well, Hum, kind of a similar story, but even crazier because Hum, they released some amazing alternative rock, shoegaze, post-hardcore band uh, albums from the 90s. from the 90s, and honestly, those albums kick ass. And you know what? Could you believe that they haven't released an album in 20 years and then they, they drop an album out of freaking fucking nowhere 20 years later after their peak with an album that is frankly on par, maybe if not better than a lot of their 90 material is insane. This is shoegazy alternative metal. Kind of weird too, because Def Deftones, their album is also kind of shoegazy alternative metal, but like it's it's mostly shoegaze, but they're using such a fat guitar tone that like it's kind of like fat in a kind of metal-y kind of chugging away with their metal kind of riffs kind of way, but it's primarily shoegaze. It's like a delicious fuzzy guitar tone and some beautiful like dreamy vocals. It just sounds freaking great. If you do, if you like if you like nice old big fuzzy fat shoegazy riffs. You should check this out because who doesn't love that? If you don't like it, well, fuck you because it's obvious it's good. One of the best rock comes of the year and what's going on? Why is, why, what's going on? That's it. Let's move on to number four. There's a lot of people around. I'm not usually, 
around people like this without a mask on, but I have to shoot my video and they have their mask off. Four more, we got four more. Sorry, don't say anything to them. Okay. No one's around, we can take the mask off. And now we can do number four. Fiona Apple, fetch the bolt cutters. Fiona Apple fetched the bolt colors. Come on, everybody! Pitchfork gave this a 10! That's like their first 10 in a decade, and it goes to Fiona Apple. And frankly, you know what? Pitchfork, they mess up all the time. But here, you know, if they're gonna give a 10 to anything, it, why not fucking Fiona Apple's freaking amazing Fetch the Bolt Cutters? An amazing album that, frankly, like, I've been a big Fiona Apple fan for a long time. I've listened to a lot of her albums. I actually have one of her albums on my top 100 list of best albums of all time. And then she comes out with Fetch the Bolt Cutters and it's like on par with a lot of her best. This is such a creative album. The thing, the, 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 the production here is crazy. Everything sounds like homemade, recorded, and just so like crazy. Like Fiona Apple's just letting herself go crazy. I'm getting the emotions out. The songwriting is just so creative and chills inducing and beautiful. It's like, it's like a crazy singer songwriter album that's like anything, anything other than, unlike anything else you've ever heard. And it's coming from Fiona Apple, who's so talented. Everyone knows Fiona Apple, come on. If you don't know Fiona Temple, you gotta go check her out. And this is one of her best albums. It's cut, it's like a dark, dense album that's a little bit complicated. Not everyone's gonna be able to get it. Yeah, it's one of those albums I really was gonna. So if you don't like this album, maybe it's because you don't get it. Everyone kind of agrees with me a little bit that it's more of a 9.5 than a 10. But you know what? 9.5 is still a very excellent score, especially for me, and it deserves that score. That's why it's in the top five, because it fucking kicks ass. It was a top, it was a top contender for number one for a while, but we got three more that came out that I can't wait to tell you which are the top three albums of 2020. Let's move on to number three. For those of you who are new to skateboarding, this is a really easy one. It's a good one to start for if you're trying to learn how to skateboard. So you can see it, it hurts. Look how good the shirt looks away from far away. It looks really good. People DM me, love the shirt, etc. I got a crazy story. So I have this friend, Will, who is a big time fan, has been following me for a long time. And he's always messaging me. He's a virgin. And honestly, respect, bro, big time. There's no doubt, that's cool. Ugh, we still got three albums left. So, maybe I shouldn't talk about Will. Number three is Died's Less Life. This is controversial. If you don't know why it's controversial, I'll tell you. Cause I'm in Died, I play guitar in Died. I'm freaking, I'm, I, 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 I write the songs, I'm playing Died, I'm like, this is a central member of Died, I'm in Died, and I'm putting Died in the top three. Is that not, what's the word? It's when you, it's, it's it's nepotism. It's nepotism for me to put died in the top three when I'm in died. I know music, period. I know what is the best albums of the year. And folks, died's less life. I'm telling ya, that album kicks ass. I re-listened to it and I'm like, God damn, we rock ass. The blend of all these different cool styles of post-hardcore, from like the shoegazy Oha de Macau, to the post-punky post-hardcore of The Trial, to the powerful opener Boxwood, to the epic masterpiece Died! The last song on the album, every song is so good! If you don't have this album in your top three, or you should probably put it at number one, but I didn't want to get in trouble for putting my own album as number one on my list of 20. Because everyone would have gotten mad at me. You can't put it. You can't put your own album. I can already visual I can already visualize the comments. I get all these comments every day. They're so freaking annoying. Please, who are you? People who are coming to my videos, what type of person do you have to be to leave a negative comment just because I'm proud of my own band? So, let's 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 go get ourselves a little, let's get ourselves a little drink. $15 beer. All right, choose your weapon. There it is. We'll drink that later, don't you worry. I can't drink it now because there's a lot of people around and it's probably illegal and the cops in this neighborhood are dicks, by the way. <sighs> Number two is Defeated Sanity's Sanguary Impetus. Is that right? It's got such a complicated name. Let me just double check that. Sanguary the Sanguinary Impetus. I was right. Number two is Defeated Sanity's Inset. Ah. Defeated San Number two is Defeated Sanity's The Sanguinary Impetus. 
brutal death metal band that's been around for a long time. They've been long recognized as one of the most brutal, brutal, brutal death metal bands ever. And they are freaking talented. This is like, they're not just brutal for the sake of being brutal. They are like really intellectual, really intelligent musicians. They kill at their freaking instruments. The musicianship, the musicianship here is off the freaking charts. Holy shit. This is going, a lot of people are not gonna like this album at all because it's brutal death metal. It's really brutal. But folks, let's be honest. The musicianship here is some of the best I've ever heard. This is one of the best brutal death metal albums I've ever heard. Best metal, best metal album of the year in my opinion. Freaking, so freaking sick. It's like, the way I listen to it and enjoy it is like as if I'm listening to a, a jazz album. It's kind of like jazz. Like the drums are so intricate and beautiful and just so, cre such creative drumming going on. Awesome riffs that are so heavy, so brutal. Such amazing, such amazing, brutal, just bust your, just break your ass with these brutal riffs but it's also intellectual and it's gross and beautiful and the lyrics about animals dying is so nihilistic and intellectual and beautiful and I got this album on vinyl because I like it so much. So honestly folks, number two, almost was number one. I gave this album a perfect, I gave this album a perfect 10 out of 10 by the way. Defeated Sanity's album is a perfect 10 out of 10. So folks, you know it's freaking good. It's like in school they tell you how you have to either go and play football like a, a freaking brutal animal idiot and get bad grades or you have to stay in the library and get good grades. Defeated Sanity says you can be a smart, a smart animal. And that's exactly what I am and I connect with that. So that's why I like this album so much. And it's one of the best of the year, it's number two. Revolution there. We finally made it to the final destination. The party is waiting inside, but first I need to reveal the best album of the year, which is DJ Sabrina. DJ Sabrina. Let's try that again. DJ Sabrina, the teenage DJ's album, Charmed. So let's go celebrate, because it's the best album of the year. One of the best albums I've heard in my life. <sighs> now. Let's go party. I can't even put it into words how good this is. So let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> 